Ha <laughs> ha, good day. Yeah, Busho's back. I'm up here in the Kimberley at the moment. And I just wanted to talk a bit more about the environment. I love it out here. But there's a whole range of misinformation promoted. Basically propaganda. And I want to talk about four Australian animals. Well, not four Australian animals. Three Australian animals and one plant. First animal, European honeybee. You can consider it a naturalised exotic today, but it is an exotic. I know a lot of people believe it's a native to their gardens, but it was introduced. It was introduced because it had been domesticated. It's introduced primarily for honey production and because we believed it was the only successful pollinator of our exotic crops. That's not necessarily correct. It could be argued that the 7,000 odd endemic pollinators could have filled the niche if they were given the opportunity. When I talk about 7,000 endemic pollinators, that's native pollinators, that includes native bees, that includes um, jewel beetles, and many of our small wasps. In introducing the European honeybee, we precluded those native organisms from participating. The European honeybee has attracted the flowers primarily because of the nectar. So with the European honeybee so successful today out competing our endemic pollinators, it's also competing with them for the nectar, precluding them from participating, but it's precluding also a lot of our nectar feeding birds and mammals. They're being out competed. So it does have a negative impact. If we look at say one of the threatening processes for the Carnaby's white-tailed black cockatoo. The European honeybee is involved. Why? Because it excludes all our native mammals and birds from the last three remaining nesting hollows because it's built its hives in there. And many of the traditional breeding hollows utilised by the Carnaby's white-tailed black cockatoo are not available to it anymore because of the European honeybee's hives. Let's consider Australia's venomous animals. We have a great diversity of venomous animals, but one of the amazing ironies is that the European honeybee is our deadliest. We have more deaths each year as a result of European honeybee sting, especially in victims that are hypersensitive, and the death is brought about because of anaphylaxis. We have more deaths each year from the European honeybee sting than all our native venomous animals combined. And the European honeybee is a, well, an animal that's found in New Zealand, where there are no snakes, and very few other venomous animals, and Ireland. And people in both of those countries die as a result of anaphylaxis from European honeybee sting. My message is, if you see a European honeybee in the garden, hit the damn thing with a fly swatter and do Australia a favour. <laughs> That's what I reckon. Let's take the rabbit. The rabbit is a naturalised exotic. It's been out there for a long while. Well, since European settlement, just about. We've hit the rabbit with myxomatosis, 1080, Khaleesi virus, Fos toxin, every hunting and trapping technique known to humans, and the rabbit still gets on with the business of getting on. I get a little bit concerned sometimes. What if it mutates and gains intelligence? Will it consider taking up arms against us? <laughs> if it does, we'll be doing a runner, I reckon. Way back in the Depression, back in the 30s, the European honeybee, well, provided protein in the form of honey, but the rabbit provided protein in the form of meat. In fact, the rabbit was so successful in providing protein to people who couldn't afford to buy meat at the butcher shop that they called it underground mutton. There's a paradox. There's a grass, and there's numerous grasses being introduced to Australia, naturalised exotic grasses, mainly as pasture, pasture for our domesticated um, livestock. The European honeybee, is looked upon in a positive way compared to the rabbit. The rabbit's looked upon in a negative way compared to, say, buffalo grass. As recently as 2006, the Australian government, well, Western Australian government particularly, via the Department of Planning and Infrastructure, was telling the pastoralists how to burn the endemic woody plants in WA and also our native grasses like spinifex so that buffalo grass could proliferate. Some of our Spinifex, which is Triodia, some species might take 15 to 17 years before they set seed. We have a fire, both intentional 
an accidental go through some of this country. The buffalo grass does well, it's an annual, and the spin effects, the native grasses, are often removed. We're turning the country into a gibber flat in some places, or just a vegetationless, less, vegetationless, less sand plain. The cane toad, yeah, I like talking about cane toads. I always seem to go for the underdog. But the cane toad is looked upon in a negative because it's called a toad, I suppose. Ha! <laughs> I mean, it produces poison, which can poison individuals of some animals that try to utilise it as food. But those within any population that are resistant to the poison, they pass that resistance on. So if we take the cane toad as new to the environment, a recent addition, it's a changing environment anyway. Well, those animals that can utilise this protein will, and they'll pass that resistance on in their offspring and proliferate. Natural selection, that's the only biological control we need. If you consider the cane toads not even declared noxious in Queensland, has not caused any extinctions in Queensland, the animals have adapted to get onto the business and getting onto the business, and that's as recently as 1935 to the present that some of our animals have adapted to utilise it as, fo as food. Don't get caught up with the doom and gloom. I live in Perth, Western Australia. In my backyard I've got Portuguese millipede, African black beetle, European guard snail, European wood borer, European honeybee, laughing turtle dove, Indian ringneck parrot, homing pigeon. I've even got kookaburra and uh, rainbow lorikeet. I've got rats and mice and a whole range of other exotic organisms, naturalised exotic, part of the new nature, that were never there. Pre-European settlement, they're all exotic to the area. So don't worry about it. Just get on with the business or getting on with the business. You might not particularly like a cane toad in your garden. Keep your dog away from it and just let it get on with the business or getting on with the business. That's what I say. Catch you later.